I'm sure that most people do not want to be co-workers with Satan, but there are some things that we do that make us a prime candidate. How can we avoid them? In continuing the study of Hebrews, we find that Paul concludes his letter to the Hebrews by cautioning the Hebrews to love others as God has loved us and gave his son to die for us. Then Paul elaborates on what believers do that show that they love each other. Father, it is our habit to be critical of those with the responsibility of leading. Like the Israelites journeying in the wilderness who use every opportunity to complain, we tend to do the same. Rather than complaining about our leaders, imperfect though they may be, in the place of complaining, help us to pray for our leaders. In Jesus' name, amen. The key text for this series of lessons is Hebrews 13, 1. It says, let brotherly love continue. Satan is excited about those who find pleasure in criticizing others. The spirit of criticism promotes unbelief, envy, jealousy, and even disrespect. Criticizing is one of the tools Satan uses to guard against brotherly love, the very thing that God has instructed us to cherish between each other. This criticizing spirit is all the more when it comes to our leaders. How often have we been among fellow believers and the conversation is diverted in a negative way toward our leaders? Who then is the author of the conversation? Paul, in Hebrews 13, 7 through 17, expressed how we should relate to our leaders. He says, we should remember those who led you, who spoke the words of God to you, and considering the results of their conduct, imitate their faith. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Do not be carried away by varied and strange teachings, for it is good for the heart to be strengthened by grace, not by foods, through which those who were so occupied were not benefited. And do not neglect doing good and sharing, for such a sacrifice God is pleased. Obey your leaders and submit to them, for they keep watch over your souls as those who will give an account. Let them do this with joy and not with grief, for this would be unprofitable for you. Paul, in Hebrews 13, seven through 17, encourages the people of God to respect and obey the leaders of their congregation our local church. He begins with inviting us to remember those leaders of the past who spoke the word of God to us. And he closes with an appeal in Hebrews 13, 17 to obey our present leaders. Hence, Paul is saying, we are to remember our past leaders and obey our present leaders. The leaders of the past are those who first preached the word, those who may have led them to Christ, those who found the congregation and have since moved or passed away. This call to remember them does not simply mean more than merely thinking of them and speaking good of them and talking about the nice experiences we had with them or offering some tribute to them. Paul explains that in remembering our past leaders, we should imitate their faith. It is evident that Paul believes that the greatest act of remembrance of someone is to copy the positive things they have done and practice them in our lives. 
Interesting enough, Paul adds the congregation's leaders of the past to the list of heroes of faith found in Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews 11 is composed of believers we should also copy. So there is nothing wrong with being a copycat when we are copying the right things. This list includes the heroes of faith of chapter 11. This list of heroes of faith concludes in Hebrews 12 with Jesus as our best example of faith. Jesus is our best example because contrary to human leaders, he never changes. He is the same yesterday and today and forever. Jesus is totally different from false teachers who change with time. These teachers, according to Paul in Hebrews 13, 9, teach various and strange things. Hence, their false teaching lead people in the wrong way. Notice that Paul's call to remember the leaders in Hebrews 13, 7 is restated in more forceful terms at the end of Hebrews 13, 7 through 17. He tells the believers to obey their church leaders. Why? Because they watch over their souls. The leaders are described here as pastors who oversee the spiritual well-being of their congregation, their flock, and who will give account to God for what they have done. They will have to answer to God for the spiritual health and growth of their church members. 1 Peter 1 through 4 and 1 Corinthians 3, 10 through 15 makes this even more evident. 1 Peter 5, 1 through 4 says, Therefore, I exhort the elders among you as your fellow elder and witness of the suffering of Christ and a partaker also of the glory that is to be revealed. Shepherd the flock of God among you exercise oversight, not under compulsion, but voluntary according to the will of God, and not for sordid gain, but with eagerness, nor yet as lording it over those allotted to your charge, but providing to the example to the flock. And when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the unfading crown of glory. Then 1 Corinthians 3, 10 through 15 says, according to the grace of God, which was given to me, like a wise master builder, I laid a foundation and another is building on it. But each man must be careful how he built on it. For no man can lay a foundation other than the one which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now, if any man builds on the foundation with gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, straw, each man's work will become evident for the day will show it because it is to be revealed with fire and the fire itself will test the quality of each man's work. If any man's work, which he has built on it remains, he will receive a reward. If any man's work is burned up, he will suffer loss, but he himself will be saved yet, so as through fire. Church leaders serve under Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep. Jesus is their savior. What is the advantage of following Paul's instructions here? Combined with the care and faithfulness from the leader, and obedience and trust from the members will result in pure joy for the leader and the members. It means that the leaders will be able to serve the congregation with joy and be able to give an account of their congregation to God with joy rather than grief. Satan is always at work to infuse people with his spirit to extinguish the love we should sacredly cherish between our fellow brothers and sisters in the family of God. His aim is to discourage confidence, 
to excite envy, create evil theorizing and dissension and discard with our tongues. Let us not be one acting as his co-worker. Paul, in the final chapter of Hebrews, warns against strange teachings. How can we guard against such teachings? Find out in part five, be careful of strange teachings.